There are a lot of games out there, and even more if you count the ones you've played since your early childhood. Nowadays, we're so used to seeing games from our past being brought back, whether it's through high fidelity or completely remade from the ground up. But why not play the games from your past as they are? While preserving those old titles is great and can offer a nostalgic trip to your simplest years thanks to emulation, one of the most common thoughts someone might have when playing these games is, why? Why go through the trouble of replaying through old games that visually don't stack up against the games of our current generation? Aside from reliving your childhood, that's about it. Okay, so you've collected all the masks and can defeat bosses as Fierce Deity Link. Cool. You've reached the top of every flagpole in New Super Mario Bros. for the DS. Alright. You've paid all your mortgage and are no longer a slave to Tom Nook. And it all took hours out of your day, if not weeks of your spare time grinding through these old games just to accomplish a hollow victory that leaves you thinking, what now? Surely there's a way to encapsulate these accomplishments and display them like trophies akin to your beautiful collection in Super Smash Bros. Melee. Well, yeah. There is. <laughs> Ever since the launch of the Xbox 360, players were introduced to something known as achievements. These digital badges gave us a new way of looking at video games, pushing us to play each game to its limits in an attempt to earn every single achievement we possibly could. Soon after, the PS3 launched with the same feature, except Sony calls them trophies. Your PlayStation Network account would have a trophy level too, which meant it grew with each trophy you earned. Easy trophies were bronze, intermediate trophies were silver, difficult trophies were gold, and seemingly unfeasible trophies would be platinum, which tended to be a rare sight. You usually earn these when you obtain every trophy in a game. If you were a collector or a completionist in general, these were enough to motivate you to play through each game till the end and maybe even 100% the ones you otherwise wouldn't have. It wasn't long before this feature became the norm for most platforms to this day, with the exception of Nintendo, who has yet to implement any sort of achievement system in any of their consoles. But why bring this up? Well, it's because of these officially licensed achievements that fans went ahead and created their own achievement system for older games that originally weren't able to have this feature implemented. This came in the form of retro achievements. If you haven't heard of this before, well, you're not alone. This feature isn't really plastered on plain sight in the world of emulation, and while it did gain popularity over the years, there's still tons of players who don't even know it exists. With retro achievements, you can re-experience games from your past in a whole new way, earning achievements for games from many different console generations with platforms like the SNES, N64, PS1, DS, and most recently, the PSP. Not only do you earn achievements for doing things like getting a Chaos Emerald in Sonic Advance, or copying a new ability for the first time in Kirby Superstar, but there's also very creative achievements that challenge you in ways you weren't before, like defeating Queen Goma before she can retreat to the ceiling in Ocarina of Time, not letting Aerith fight at the Sector 5 church in Final Fantasy VII, or looking at yourself in the mirror as you start your journey in Mother 3. Aside from just earning achievements though, you can also get more out of the experience in a way that connects you to other players regardless of what you're playing. A few examples would be leaderboards. Let's say you beat the Mushroom Kingdom while playing Super Mario Bros. for the NES. That record will be saved and compared to other times locked in by other players, keeping track of who has the best time in that specific stage. There is also active presence. Some games keep track of your progress and keep other players on the loop of where you are in a specific game, like in Majora's Mask where it informs the status of what link form you're in, where you're located, how many hearts you have, etc. Animal Crossing does something similar where it keeps track of how many bells you have, how many different fish you've caught, and it even updates the points you earn each day for the HRA. So if you've never cared about the Happy Room Academy before, well, now you do. On that note, some games even feature real-time achievement progress. A good example would be Sonic 1 for the Game Gear, which displays potential achievements you can earn while playing at a certain point in the game, like completing Green Hill without dying or completing the first stage without jumping. If you were to fail the challenge, the achievement would no longer be displayed. The same can be said with Super Smash Bros. on the N64. One of the only achievements I have left consists of beating Classic Mode in the highest difficulty with just one stock and no continues. It's not an easy one, I'll say that much. 
These little extra features come bundled with retro achievements and it brings new life to games that we'd otherwise move on from and even forget about. The great thing about earning achievements in this way is the fact that your accomplishments are always saved to the cloud. So even if you start over on a new device, it still remembers everything you've achieved when you log in. Just like how PlayStation levels up your account with each trophy you earn, all of your achievements earn you points for your Retro Achievements account, with the amount you earn being varied with each achievement depending on how difficult they are. You might have noticed these achievements have a bright border around them, and that's because these are hardcore achievements. Normal achievements won't have a border displayed. Since emulators are known to have features like save states and cheats, hardcore mode basically disables those features so that you can play your games the authentic way, and your achievements will show that. To top it off, hardcore achievements are worth double the points, and getting every achievement for a game will result in a badge on your profile, showing you've mastered said game. While many games support achievements, there are still some that aren't supported yet. Otherwise, I'd be mastering Tomodachi Collection for the DS and play it for hours a day. Trust me, I would. <laughs> Fortunately, there's a bright side. Retro Achievements is an open source collaborative project between tons of fans who love these games. You yourself could potentially claim a game that doesn't have achievements yet for a supported console, program those achievements, and even design or rework the artwork for each of them. So, someone out there, please add a set for this game. I would be incredibly happy. I like to keep track of new achievements through Chivo Tracker. They update their database every day at 12 a.m. Pacific time. It also helps me keep track of achievement progress for games I want to focus on the most. Now, you're probably thinking this all sounds great, but how can we use these features when emulating our games? Well, I'm glad you asked. Primarily, retro achievements are integrated within RetroArch an all-in-one emulation client that houses emulators for an extensive number of consoles. In the Settings tab, you can find the Achievements option, and all you have to do is make sure you have a Retro Achievements account, log in, and enable the achievements along with the settings that help make the experience more enjoyable for you. When you're playing a game in RetroArch, you'll be greeted with achievement progress in the bottom left. And if you go into the menu mid-game, you can keep track of that game's achievements in case you ever want to refresh your focus on whatever objective you're after, or if you just want to stare at them all. If for whatever reason your achievements aren't active for a supported game, chances are you don't have the correct ROM file. You can verify this by going to the game's page on the RetroArch site. Navigate to the official forum topic, and it'll show you every supported ROM by their name and their checksum key. No, these aren't links to the actual ROM files. Launching these games and keeping track of their achievements doesn't stop at just RetroArch though. If you're a Twitch streamer, you can definitely use real-time tracking for retro achievements and include it in your layout kinda like what you can see on screen. Even better than that, since RetroArch is technically a standalone emulator, it can be used in other emulation frontends like LaunchBox, which coincidentally supports real-time achievement progress for those who prefer their own visual aesthetic when browsing their library. You can even view your personal account if you want to. The best part about RetroArch is that it's supported on a lot of different devices, so you could potentially grind through your achievements on your phone, your living room consoles, and even your handhelds. And that's all I have for now. Overall, Retro Achievements is a real game changer, and if you're someone who enjoys playing older games and you have a knack for collecting things, I highly recommend you try it out. More consoles like the Sega Dreamcast and GameCube are rumored to make their way next, so games like Sonic Adventure and Super Smash Bros. Melee will likely provide even more fun than they already do. Even further down the line, we could potentially see PS2, Wii, and even the 3DS receive achievement support in the future, which is exciting all on its own, but baby steps. If you would like to learn more about me, what I do, or what I look like, my social media links are there in the bottom right corner, as well as my Twitch URL if you want to join me whenever I try grinding through achievements live. Thank you guys for watching. This is Usaki Shade, and I hope you enjoyed the video. Take care.